Welcome to Enlightenment of Change on webtalkradio.net. I'm your host, Connie Whitman. So for those of you who might not know me, um, which I hope you do by now, I really am passionate about helping you um, change your perspective so that you can clearly see whatever that successful future is for you. Um, by incorporating the little changes that my guests and I share on the show, I hope that it inspires you to be able to create whatever that huge impact you're looking for in your life. So thanks for joining us every week, and I really do hope you get value out of the show. So my quote today is by William Poland, and he says, Without change, there's no innovation, creativity, or incentive for improvement. So have you been trying to support your local restaurants and maybe small businesses during the COVID-19 lockdown? You know, these small businesses are really the tapestry and the backbone of what makes, I think, our community so special. Now, as off-putting as this whole situation, quarantine, isolation is, and mask wearing has been, with these guidelines and to some degree uh, public fear has caused a lot of small businesses and entrepreneurs to actually have to reinvent themselves. So times of change and crisis seem to beg for the spirit of innovation and wow, you know, have we ever gotten that uh, today? So today my guest is amazing, the Victoria, her name, her, the amazing, she is amazing. Her name is Victoria Liu. And Victoria is a 24-year-old uh, graduate from the University of Florida a top, at the top of her class with a master's in accounting. Now, she's the CEO of BIPO, uh, BIPO, and BIPO is designed to allow fans at sporting events to skip the lines at concessions by ordering through the BIPO mobile app. Now, interesting enough, with the COVID um, epidemic, Victoria quickly shifted her business model to include restaurants in order to help the efficiency of their curbside delivery. And it allows vendors to easily list whatever their products are so their customers can quickly and easily pick up through that curbside delivery. Now, she has truly embraced the entrepreneurial spirit and is shifting gears with these changing times. We all need to learn from my guest today, Victoria. So, Victoria, thank you for being on. And just being so um, inspiring with your innovation. So innovation you. comes from anywhere, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, definitely, this has been an interesting time for us, especially mm -hmm. with everything going on. And um, my startup has been a bit more than a year now, and we have changed so much since the very beginning. So it's all a part of entrepreneurship. You have to adapt and change all the time. Yeah, and I keep hearing that word um, as a business owner, we have to keep pivoting. And boy, have we been pivoting. <laughs> so <laughs> it's interesting. Yes, you've absolutely. It's interesting, though. You've only been in business a year, and you've changed direction several times. So having a great idea and implementation doesn't mean it's going to end there, right? It's this constant evolution. So, so tell exactly. everybody, I mean, I did a little bit in my intro, but really tell everybody, where did BIPA, where did that come alive? What was the idea behind it? So this is actually really interesting. BIPO was um, kind of the idea originated when I went to a football game. And this is back when I was still in school. I was um, still studying and getting my master's degree in accounting. And I went to a football game. I was thirsty. It was hot outside it's in Florida. So, you know, the weather is 90 degrees. The sun is hitting you. Then I'm like, I need to go get something to drink. Then I realized when I was standing in a concession um, stand line, I've been there for 20 minutes and I still haven't reached the cash register. So sadly, I went back to my seat with no water. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then just that problem solving side of me kept brainstorming. I'm like, you know, what if I had an app? What if I had something that allowed me to order my water ahead of time or on the spot pay and had somebody to deliver that? product to me to my seat and I can enter in my exact seat location and everything and just keep watching the game or whatever it is that I'm watching and still have my food or my drink brought to me and I feel like this is a problem that a lot of people face across different entertainment um, venues that they visit like sports um, just just so many different circumstances where I could see this could be valuable and then you know if you think about the vendor side they're missing a big chunk of people that are not going to the lines and they're missing sales. And then they're the customer that not, they're not getting what they want. 
So how do you bridge them together? And I thought, well, let's create Bippo. And that's how Bippo originally started. And why yeah. the name? We've got, uh, why the name Bippo? So that's actually another really interesting question I get all the time. So Bippo actually is short for baby hippo. And uh, if you see my logo, it's actually a hippopotamus with a big mouth. And that's kind of what I envisioned my um, user group to be. They were, you know, hungry. They're strong. You know, hippopotamus are very strong animals. And um, they're hungry. You know, they want to skip the line. And they want to get their food. They want to get their products. And so that's, that's uh, the reason behind the the name Bippo for baby hippo. I love it. And I'm cracking up because, you know, and I, listen, I have my partner lives in Tampa. I have a second business and she lives in Tampa. You actually met her brother, Johnny Pellegrino. And yes. so, yeah, so that, so that's how I met Johnny through Mary. But anyway, uh, we went down a couple of years ago in, I think it was February, Victoria, and we got, all, now I'm in New Jersey, right? So it's a little in the winter, January, it's cold here. Got uh -huh. off the plane. I said to my husband, I'm going to pass out. It was 96 degrees in February. And so I said, how could anybody live down here? Like, it's so hot. So as you were describing exactly. going to this event, the sun is beating down and you're thinking like, like in a desert, water, you know? <laughs> and right. Then you get, I would pay anything just to get my water. <laughs> Can I have a sip? And you get in line. And you're waiting and you walk away thinking, I still didn't get my stupid water. So from necessity is usually where innovation comes from. So, and, and I giggled because you're high, clearly you're a highly intelligent young lady. You're 24 and you, you know, you've launched this, this wonderful business. And so, you know, kudos to you for using your brain. But you said, so my problem solving skills, I'm sitting, instead of watching the game, now you're thinking, how could I have gotten my water, right? <laughs> Exactly. I didn't even pay attention afterwards. I was like, I'm thirsty. What can I do now? I love it. I love it. So we need, but see, that's where innovation comes from, Victoria. And it really, there's no age limit. It's that ability to kind of lock yourself in your own brain and think, hmm, what can I create to help and whatever that is to help. And in your case, it was the thirst at that moment, right? How could I eliminate the pain and create a solution? And oh, by the way, have it win-win for the customer, but also for the vendor. So there's a money, there was a money opportunity. Yes, so brilliant. Absolutely. So, okay. Now you started a year ago. That was your vision. You created this app to be able mm -hmm. to go to, you know, these events. Okay. And then COVID-19 happened. So tell me how you shifted and pivoted, um, it, like what that really entailed and, and what was the outcome from that? Absolutely. So it's very interesting um, when COVID-19 just started happening and it, it, it happened everything very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so what um, my team and I had not realized was we had basically developed an app that could be used for restaurants. Um, you know, the, the app that we developed is so universal in the sense that people don't have to download it. People don't have to make an account. They can easily access it from any device. And this brings out a huge market for a lot of different industries. So that restaurants, um, their basic need when COVID-19 happened was that they had to find a way to service their clients and make them feel like their food was safe and there was minimum contact. Right. And so when this happened, my company decided, well, let's do curbside delivery. And curbside delivery, the way that we developed it, is that it allows for minimal, absolutely minimal contact between the restaurant and the customer. So, you know, they can literally order what they want, they can pay, they can tip, and they can tell the restaurant exactly what vehicle they are in. When they pull up at the restaurant outside in the parking lot, they can immediately tell them that I'm outside with a push of a button. And they, the restaurant will get notified like um, in real time that they're here. And they'll bring out the, the food usually to their window or some of them request it to be in their trunk. And that's it. So it's, um, it's very interesting how um, with COVID-19, all the sporting and the um, entertainment events got canceled. So then I could, you know, I in a way had to make a, you know, evaluate, okay, so what I had developed originally for these sporting and entertainment events, I can no longer really service them. But I had this whole other industry with restaurants that needed this demand. And so this is how we kind of just shifted to their needs. 
which is brilliant. And you didn't, you didn't say, oh, well, I guess when the sporting events comes back, we'll be back in business. You thought, well, wait a <laughs> minute, we still have this resource. How can it, exactly. how can it help others? Right. And uh, so yes. two questions I want you to answer. First one, everybody, I know everybody's thinking, okay, so what's the difference between Bippo and DoorDash, um, Uber Eats, all of those other venues that you can also get that curbside delivery? Right. Well, this is a very um, common question we get. A lot of people confuse us with those companies. And actually, there is a clear difference in that, you know, or Uber Eats, DoorDash, they are solely um, home delivery. So what they, you know, most people go, they order food and they expect a delivery to their house or a specific, you know, residential business location. But Bitbo, we don't do delivery at all. What we do is, you know, where it's sort of just a modified pickup a more efficient pickup system where they can still go outside because, you know, everybody's stuck at home now. But if somebody wants to go and get out, get out, get some fresh air in their car, they can still do that and go to the restaurant and have that minimum contact between the restaurant and the, the customer. And another big thing um, between Uber Eats and DoorDash and those companies and I is that the way that they um, market to their customers that they take a huge chunk of their sales. So they take 20 to 30% of a, usually a restaurant's um, sales revenue. And this is a huge, huge margin that a lot of businesses, even today with COVID-19 happening, they are, are struggling, even though they are using these companies to survive. And with Bitbo, we are a lot, lot less inexpensive, but the value is still there. And um, a lot of restaurants really appreciate what we're doing for them now is that we offered our services completely free for the community just to help out local businesses. We want to encourage people to still go out there, go get their food, go support these um, local businesses that still need to pay their rent. They still need to pay their employees. And um, I think that's why I think the business, Bippo especially, has grown a lot since COVID-19. And, and think about that, Victoria. You know, listen, DoorDash, Uber Eats, they're great because they're still trying to help keep businesses in business, right? The restaurants in business, especially. So that's awesome. But yes. you've taken it, but you've taken it a step further because you're not taking the profit margin for these restaurants and think about it. Um, you know, restaurants, their, their profits, some of them are not going to survive. That's just the reality, which is tragic, yeah. right? This, their lifelong vision, they started business and then COVID-19 and they didn't have enough of a following or whatever, right? They fail. So what you're trying to do is, is still offer that limited interaction human to human, but give mm -hmm. the bigger profit margin to the business. So the, the customer benefits, it gets me out of the freaking house in a <laughs> safe way. And it yes. allows me to support my local peeps, right? My local community yes. restaurants and my restaurants are making more money in their, in their till, so to speak, or their bottom line, because I'm using this app. So the app is free for anybody that downloads it. Yes. So, well, actually there's no download because it's a web-based app. Okay. Yeah, so and the customers, they, they don't um, have to pay any fee at all for the convenience of having the food being delivered to their, their car. Sure. What has the feedback yeah. been, been from the businesses that have been using it in their community so that they're cooking and then they're physically the ones? So you don't – and here, I just want everybody to understand this. The, the safety – there's another layer of safety that Victoria has kind of built into this. So if I'm the restaurateur, I'm cooking the food – my staff and I are cooking the food and then we're the only ones touching it, bringing it out to the end user, which in this case is the customer. So you're eliminating exactly. that middleman of another, another set of hands, so to speak, touching it. Yes. As the delivery well. man usually. Yeah. yeah. If in like Uber Eats, DoorDash. Right. Postmates, right. So they, they would. Yep. Yeah. So it's another, I just wanted people to understand if you're really kind of germed out about the whole COVID um, it, it's another way for you to, it, it, to I, I guess, insulate yourself from a, a more um, a protective la layer. What has yeah. the feedback, Victoria, what has the feedback been from the restaurants who have embraced this? What What are the owners saying to you? Oh, um, I mean, everything has been absolutely positive. They, they really like, they've called me like their lifesaver, their business, really. Sure. Um, I had a client, um, Patty Cakes, they're a cupcake kind of cafe, small uh, mom and pop um, coffee shop in Gainesville. And 
they initially launched about, I would say, a week or two weeks almost before COVID-19 really started just impacting our entire lives. And they were so lucky that they onboarded with us just right on time so that they were not having a huge impact because if they didn't have our system set up, nobody would be entering their little shop because it's very small and they, they wouldn't be having any business. And um, the manager, Wayne, he has, you know, he has said so much positive things about us. He said, you know, Victoria, like our sales, like 20 to 30 percent of all our business is actually going through your app when they were first starting. I mean, right now, I, I can just imagine it's probably like more than half now. I would. And bet. they're so they're surviving solely on our platform. Every, you know, all the transactions, all the coffee orders are going through the app. People are just rolling outside um, the store and they're just bringing the, the coffee out. So it's 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 really changed the way um, a lot of my clients are doing business, but it's also keeping them alive during this time. And in fact, I I think that it's also trying to teach them how to change with the times and the new technology that's going out. And it's also very beneficial for especially my startup. Like we're learning a lot of new things that we don't know about our clients. So we're changing our app constantly. We're trying to adapt to our customer needs all the time. So it's really been a very good um, impact for the both of us, from my customer and to me. And and here's the thing, you know, I've, te- I've taught sales for 38 years, right? And, and that's my world, right, is sales. And what you're describing is sales. So, it, it, but, it, but it's such a beautiful way because with, Everything is changing almost daily. And so businesses are saying, all right, what do we need to do today to survive? And you're saying, hey, guys, what do you need to survive? How can I ha- let me change with you? So it's this exactly. beautiful partnership that you've it's not like, well, this is what I could do for you. Buy it or don't. You're saying, whoa, <laughs> hey, man, we're in this together all the way. Let's evolve so that everybody remains profitable. Everybody s- survives through this. Exactly. And, and if I can give you that little extra boost, right? That's what I'm here for. And as a young entrepreneur, this is real important, Victoria, because how, what you do now to help and support people, when things get better, your business is going to skyrocket because they're going to appreciate and remember, Hey, wait a minute. I had this issue. She went back to her team and created a solution for me this kid, she's, she's my Pete now. She's, she's my, she's in my world that I need to use and leverage. And, and you've opened dialogue, believe it or not, even, even on the virtual front, we have to have dialogue with our customers, but going forward as your clients, because we, here's the reality too, Victoria, we don't know next month, three months, nine months, a year, we have no idea what that's going to look like. So as you're, restaurateurs as they evolve and change with whatever's coming because we none of us have a crystal ball if we did we'd be bazillionaires they're going to keep <laughs> come but they're going to keep coming back to you because you are open to the dialogue initially and say hey vic this is what we're this is a, a problem we're facing what do you think what can we do you're the problem yeah. solver you can go back and say i'm on it let's see what we can do right let's partner right. let's partner and test this so what a beautiful yeah. marriage you're making with all these small businesses while keeping them afloat um, these are businesses you're going to have for life because you are their lifeline right now another question so how do restaurants get started with BIPO, you know, can you work with, with, um, restaurants across the United States? Is it just kind of isolated to Florida right now? Mm -hmm, Absolutely. So the easiest way for people to get in contact with us is obviously through our website, BIPO.com. And they can easily, you know, call us or fill out a uh, contact information and a representative in our team will reach out immediately. They'll, you know, set up a time to talk with them, kind of onboard them with um, some brief information about us, information that we need from them. And pretty much the shortest time we can get them set up is in 48 hours, which is actually pretty short given with all the clients that we're trying to get. But we understand that, you know, 48 hours can make a huge difference, especially in this time. So we're really trying to get people as soon as they can on our system so they, they can start getting orders, start getting customers, generating some revenue. And BIPO is actually not limited just to Florida. We're actually, we were going to expand to our location in Boston. They were um, a brand new restaurant about to open actually sometime in April. And because of COVID-19, they had to push back. And 
um, definitely we want to, you know, help out all the businesses across the United States and um, as many different restaurants, coffee shops, pastry shops, whatever you name it that we can help with. It's it's great because the small mom and pops are struggling. Um, yeah. You know, and I, I share a story. We had some deaths in the family. My cousin had some deaths in the family. And, you know, we can't go to funerals to support them. Um, everybody were just kind of alone. They were kind of alone. So my sis, my siblings and I and my mom and dad, we were like, oh, what, what can we do? Do we send cards? You know, what do you do to pay your condolences? And my sister, who also lives in North Jersey, my cousin lives in North Jersey, picked a restaurant that she knows that they like and called the, the owner and said, hey, listen, I want to order this amount of food. They could freeze some meals and, you know, just to take that burden off so that they can grieve. And the owner, Victoria, like thanked my, my sister said I was almost on tear, you know, in tears on the phone. He said, I know, you know, you could have gone to my competitors, but you chose me and how touched I am and that we have such a good reputation. You have no idea I could pay my employees and was so grateful that, oh. you know, my sister shared an email. We're all crying saying, oh my God, oh. you don't know how you're impacting, um, these these local businesses and now here's yet another tool to help businesses stay relevant during yes. this time of crisis right because we're in crisis i just have to ask a question so your team you're young so your team of people are they friends of yours did, were they like-minded entrepreneurial kind of uh, spirited people how did you pull, pull your team together i'm just curious um that's a very good question so some of them were friends. Some of them were um, people that I've met along the uh, entrepreneur community here in Gainesville. So Gainesville is the home of the University of Florida. So um, University of Florida has lots of students that are always constantly coming in and out and graduating and moving about. And there's actually a very nice um, group of entrepreneurs, student entrepreneurs here. And the program here is especially helpful and um, supportive of entrepreneurship here. And so I've attended a lot of these events and sometimes I would meet these like-minded individuals and they would become my friends and then we often talk and bounce off ideas with one another. And this is where I've met most of the people that are now a part of my team. And I've um, it's very easy also to get internships because of all the demand here in, um, with the students near us and absolutely we want to, you know, share our experiences with them and teach them valuable things that they can't get in school. So then we have internship programs that where people can onboard with us, learn about sales, learn about um, software development and sure. computer science and just different aspects where they would have to go far to another company where it's more difficult and to go to, to go to California and get an internship where they can get an internship right here in Gainesville. Which is amazing because it's, you know, you are the future. I mean, we, you know, it sounds silly, but it's the truth. And I think, I think, my, this is my own personal business perspective, mm -hmm. right? Because I've been in business for, for 20 years. But what's happening now is so unprecedented that nothing is going to be the same from a global I mean, business perspective, yeah. everything has changed and technology and how we leverage virtual, whatever that is for whatever industry you're in, it's here, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> so we need to embrace yeah. that technology. So for you as an entrepreneur, um, as your restaurants, as we roll out of this, what, and honestly, Victoria, it's so funny because see, my brain is, is going business, 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 right? What can you create? Um, and, and not that I'm telling you what to do far from that, but I think as the restaurants and other businesses evolve and come out of whatever, uh, their, their growth potential is in this, whatever the new marketplace is going to be. I think you're going to see opportunity. So, um, yeah. and, and again, because you're young, it, your, your trajectory of innovation is going to be exponential because you're, you've already created something. First time is the hardest and you've already <laughs> pivoted within a year of operation. And you're going to see, I think that pivoting, um, to more industries that whatever this technology is. Yeah. So you, you're probably already yeah. thinking that. So, you know, so, oh, yeah. yeah, so much more to come. And the other thing I commend you on is you do need a group of people you trust that you can bounce ideas, but understand, 
understands um, that entrepreneurial spirit because everybody's not meant to be an entrepreneur. I really believe that because it's risk. Exactly. You know, you don't have a steady paycheck in the 401k and the benefits. Yeah. You know, you're kind of managing it all on your own. So you need people like that who think, no, man, we've got this. Let's innovate. <laughs> and, you know, we can create, you know, over the next whatever, you know, for you, 50 years. So my next question is, since you started, obviously, a new new startup, the, the growth is slower. What have you seen in the past couple of months where COVID, a lot of businesses are on the decline? Have you seen the trajectory constantly ticking up for yourself? What does your profits look like? I'm oh, curious. Well, right now, it's um, well, because what we have done is waive the fees from community. We have we're not currently generating as much revenue as we expect. OK, but regardless, that is, you know, um, as a startup, that is expected. But what has happened is our sales volume through the restaurants that we're getting, the, the amount of users, the amount of customers we're getting has skyrocketed to like, last time I looked at the numbers, it's like a thousand three hundred percent. So yeah, um, we've, we've have like a uh, 12,000 about customer reach. We have, you know, over $75,000 in sales volume coming constantly through our website and our, our web app. So it's been a really um, mind blowing and very exciting to see that people are using my app. And a lot of the times what I would do is um, pop into a restaurant that is my client just to say hi. And then I would see people in their car using that app. And I'm like, these are my people, they're using it. And it's really exciting because I would never imagine like last year, you know, cause last year a little bit about my, background was that you know I was still in school getting my master's in accounting and I already at that point before I um, had this idea I had already a full-time accounting job I was going to be an audit staff at a Miami firm and so I had my life kind of already set up um, I was you know for sure about to graduate go on with my life in Miami work in this accounting firm as an accountant a steady stable job with uh, you know an annual <laughs> income that I was for sure about and my whole family lived in Miami so I just had this whole plan set up then two months before I graduated this all just changed I was like no this is this is what I want FIPO is what I want and so I said no to the firm I said no to my annual income I said no to the family <laughs> and here I am doing this thing all by myself but it was it's definitely really risky and I tell um all my future entrepreneurs who want to aspire to be entrepreneur that it is definitely a hard decision but you will never regret it because I think a lot of the times you look back and be like well I I took the risk and at least I know that I did and and here's the thing what would have been the worst thing that could have happened you said no I I'm thirsty I'm creating this app and <laughs> nobody wanted it what would have been the worst thing that would have happened you would have gone back and gotten an accounting job. Well, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> right, not, really, nothing would have changed except yes. the risk didn't work out. Oh, well, and then you, you march on with yeah, your Yeah, but life. then you learn from that. That's the thing. So every failure is another lesson learned. Really so true. there's not really a failure. Really and true. Um, I always thought that I could go back to accounting eventually, if even if that's what I wanted to pursue. And that's why I just, this, this, really um, made me feel more even comfortable. But people just thought it was really ironic because accounting is such a, um, <laughs> <laughs> like I can't put it in a, another safer, like uh, predictable. Where, predictable. Yes, like, it's so predictable. It's so, uh, accounts are known to be so conservative and not risk taking. And then here I am doing the most risk taking thing ever, starting a business. So I love um, it. My um, my school, the people at my school, my dean, and they're all saying like, "Wow, Victoria, of all our accounting students that ever graduated, you're the only one that has done this." Here's so. the thing, though. But you said to yourself at that moment, Victoria, where that moment in that stadium, everything changed, and you know, people laugh because you you hear people share their success stories like yours, or that that moment where they thought. Oh, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And 
how many people don't act on it out of fear, whatever. Here's the other thing. You're young, and I commend you for pulling, you know, taking the leap of faith. I call it the leap of faith because you're not, I'm assuming you're not married. You don't have children yet. You don't have a mortgage, yeah. right? You don't have all of those um, boundaries that many of us have. So to take that leap of faith, there are other people might be, you might be responsible for others. So it's a lot harder, right. but people have those, I call them the epiphany where this is what I should be doing. And then they don't do it. And what happens I think is like, you're, you're taking a little bit of your soul and you're, you're kind of killing it little by little by little. Yes. And it was funny because you said, as soon as you made the decision and you started doing it, like you felt alive. It, right. It was yes. like, holy crap, this is what I, how who knew this is what I was supposed to be doing. Who knew? But it's that exactly. moment of the epiphany. You have to be tuned in. And the other thing I want to comment on and I commend you for is your which is so funny that you're an accounting person because yeah. accounting it's one plus one equals two. You know, the the profit and loss statement is such and such. And here you are going, yeah, I'm gonna roll with things, right? And then, Yeah, maybe one plus two could be five or six, you know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Talk about using both hemispheres of your brain is just brilliant. So I'm, I'm so excited for you. We're, we're um, out of time, but I'm so excited for you. I know this doesn't matter, but I'm so proud of you. Uh, I think, yes, I think you're outstanding young lady. And my, my, my little piece of wisdom, if I could share it with you, and then I'm going to ask you to share wisdom with my, my listeners is continue to talk to your customers they have the problems. You have solutions going forward, whatever that means. Clearly, you have the, the capability. You're brilliant. So take that, that capability of brilliance, of understanding the, the problem, and then turning around and creating the solution. Continue to do that, and you will be a bazillionaire you know, quickly. My other uh, thing I just want to comment on for you is, and I also commend you, because coming out of college, and whether you have college debt or not, and you're starting out, so you do have bills you need to save money because you probably have your savings depleted, and you're giving back by giving it free to people, I commend you for that because, you know, this is another thing I've learned in my, in my life personally, Victoria, the more you give, when I tell you, it's like a tsunami that comes back to you. <laughs> so this will serve you well by do because you did the right thing to help people who were struggling. You're struggling too. I get it, right? You're a struggling entrepreneur starting out, but you gave back right out of the gate. All of the people and all of the people who have signed up won't forget that. Trust me on that. It's, it's this goodwill Thank that's you. priceless. So kudos to you for that. Um, Thank you so much. Last, last piece from you, Victoria. What, and I don't care what age group, what would be your advice to someone who has that epiphany or that idea? What, what would be your advice? My advice is, uh, Wow. Okay. My advice is just do it really. Um, it was very hard for me, um, to make this is the decision to start my company. You know, I come from a Chinese background where you have to follow the rules, follow your parents. Um, you know, I have very traditional Chinese tiger parents that you hear about where, you know, they want you to be that doctor. They want you to be that lawyer. They want to be that accountant that, you know, that they, envision me to be and um, if you are someone like this where you feel like you've had the pressures from society for the pressures from your family but then you're thinking about this idea that you really want to do I would say just forget all of that think about yourself and think about inside 10 years from now you're going to regret that you tried to listen to society tried to listen to your family and your friends and you didn't listen to yourself because what that's going to happen is time has passed and you can never get time again. And so what I always say is, um, you know, we all have a limited time on this earth so that we all share. We all share 24 hours a day. That's right. So make use of that time wisely. And because no, no amount of money can bring you an extra second of time. It's really true. And yep. you're a very old so. soul in a very young person's body. Let me tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Tremendous wisdom. Um, really last, I promise my last question, uh, but I'm, I'm so curious and I know my listeners are as well, especially those that come from um, parents like yours, right? That, that old way of thinking and not that it's right or wrong or good or bad. It's how they were raised. 
Yeah. What do they think now? What What do they say to you now? <laughs> uh, well, I have parents that are very traditional, and in the Chinese culture, um, parents are not very, uh, you know, in the sense of like in the uh, American culture, they're very outwardly, uh, um, how do I, expressive. And so my parents would never say the words like, I'm proud of you, or they will never really give me a hug or anything. But in, in, in our culture, we do this like nod, where parents are like, we approve. But that's like, you get that, and then you know. <laughs> so I love I think, it. I think in the sense my parents have never really said to me, you know, Victoria, I you know commend you for taking that bold step, although you defied our orders. <laughs> you... <laughs> You still did the right thing because, you know, you live your life. You are your own person. Absolutely. But I think in the my, probably in the deep down bottom of their heart somewhere, I think they're a little bit proud. And I hope they are, maybe. I, you <laughs> but, know, as a parent, they're busting buttons. Your, your culture doesn't allow them to express that. That's how they were raised. Remember that. Yeah. But that doesn't take away from the magic that you're creating. Just keep rocking, man, because you, you are a rock star in my, 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 I'm proud of you. There you go. I, oh. I said it for your parents. How's that? Thank you. <laughs> That's all that really matters. <laughs> yeah. Thank I love you. it. I love it. So guys, I, I hope we've intrigued you from the entrepreneur, you know, that entrepreneurial spirit, but really, really, please, if you're a local business um, or you're someone who knows a local business, share the information, reach out to Victoria. You could go to her website, which is bipo.com. It's B-Y-P-P-O.com. Send her requests, information, whatever you might need at info at bitbo.com. And I'm also going to post Victoria in some of the information you sent me. You showed the little um, ABC had a, a TV video, TV 20, I yes. think was another one. I'm going to mm -hmm. post that, guys. Check it out. Um, some of the restaurants, it was nice to see. They were oozing appreciation because they, their businesses were sustainable even during this downsize. And, you know, that's the magic of entrepreneurship, right? That we're all in this together. They're entrepreneurs that you're helping. So I'm going to post those videos if you guys want to uh, check it out. And the app can be found on app.bippo.com. But really, they should go to your website, right? That has the most information, yeah, Victoria? Exactly. Cool. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much. What a great show. Thank you. You've gotten me charged up. Now my brain is thinking, what can I create next, right? Oh. <laughs> Well, that's, just, that's exactly what my goals are, to I, inspire more people. And I think that's, you know, that's what we're here for. And, and guys, go to WhitmanAssos.com. I have a ton of free resources about sales, right, to help you expand whatever, um, whether you're an entrepreneur, help you, in, in, you know, create more sales. And if you're a sales leader in the corporate world, again, to help you with it, improve your team's ability so that we at the end of the day, for me and, and Victoria, I think you and I really hit on this today. It's all about helping our customer, whatever that looks like, whatever your industry is. And so you have Bippo.com, right, to help with, with restaurants and stuff like that and food delivery. And you have Whitman and Asos to help on that more of the communication, how to yes. uh, sell. So the, the idea is about the show, like I said on, at the beginning, I really want you to use the information, energy, synergy, um, you know, uh, innovation, creation, uh, inspiration that my, my guests bring to the show. So, Victoria, absolute delight to meet you. Um, we you. will. St you're stuck with me. So I don't know if Johnny told you that, but you're <laughs> stuck with me. Um, I really do want to hear about your future endeavors. I would love to have you come on regularly. Absolutely. Yeah, as you have more innovations, let's talk about it. I, I believe the more we share, the more uh, people's creativity comes to life and the more that everybody can create together. So, yeah, you, you could definitely uh, come on anytime you like. So anytime you have innovation, let me know and we'll, we'll make room thank for you, you on the show. Thank you so much. I yeah. appreciate it. You're, you're just a delight. So thank you so much for being on. Um, everybody, you. I hope you guys will join me weekly as we question, build, and discover together that no matter what change you're, you're through, COVID-19, your own personal life, death, life, whatever it is, I hope my guests and myself inspire you 
to look at change and say, you know, I think I've got this. I think I know what that next little step is. And it's not a giant step. they are baby steps that we're asking you to take. So um, thank you for tuning in. And I really do hope you find the value in the show and, and my guest, Victoria. Absolute delight. Love you, kiddo. Um, thank you. Keep, keep on rocking your, your cool self, man. Um, just love, <laughs> love what you're doing. Thanks, Thanks everybody. So much. My truly my pleasure. You've been listening to Enlightenment of Change with me, your host, Connie Whitman, on webtalkradio.net. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Please, please think of innovation. Please be inspired. And of course, stay in during this virus and be safe always. Thanks, everybody.